planned. Waterproof, doesn't let water leak through, but. Well, I'm really hoping this didn't get destroyed. This is brand new, just uh, about four or five days ago. I bought it for the 4th of July for the get together. And uh, we had a storm come through last night. And obviously the anchors didn't move. I've got about 20 pounds of lead in each bag. It didn't move at all, but uh, the structure seems to have taken a bit of a hit water wise. Well, this kind of curbed my plans for a second. I put this whole canopy up in order to be able to keep my work area dry outside. And I thought I paid up for this one. Now, I want you guys to let me know what kind of canopy, this is a 12 by 12. What kind of canopy do you have or do you recommend? We had a storm come through last night with some rain but I ain't kidding you, ain't nothing any other thunderstorm has ever never been, you know? I wouldn't register any, anything disastrous. Wind came up and there's nothing, nothing spectacular about the wind. It just came up and then uh, I'm like, I went inside, but I kind of stood outside and watched things for a while to see what the storm was that was coming in, what it was going to do. All right, let's go ahead while this is fixing itself, let's go ahead and unstrap this thing and peel the cover back. I got some goals today of wanting to get this guy. Hasn't ran since last year. I bought it about a year ago now and got it running, had a knock in the motor. Turned out it was all lifter noise. It wasn't a knock, it was lifter noise. Got that silenced right down, winterized it. Never have put it on the water. This year, hopefully in the next week or two, it's on the water. If I have any luck, today's Thursday. Any good luck and it'll be on the water this weekend. We'll see. But I've got quite a few things to do to it, which is I want to run it, make sure she's still running good. If she's still running good, I got to go after this out drive. It's got a leaky uh, exhaust boot. I got a new boot purchased for it. And uh, we're going to fix that, show you how to do that. And we're going to make sure all the gauges are working. The hydraulic part of this is just an up only. It's a single action cylinders on these that just lift the trim up. Otherwise it rests against the stop. This is a 1970, nope, nope, 1967 StarCraft Holiday. Well, the inside looks, boys, I can't, I can't say enough good things about having a good cover on a boat. Because the inside, whilst not completely vacuumed, because I never vacuumed it, still looks just the way I left it. And thank goodness no yellow jackets are attacking me, because or, or wasp. Wasp have been crazy this year so far. We've had this about every every few years. There'll be like no wasp. I killed wasp nests out in my shed. Thousands of them it seemed like, and then. You go for a year or two and nothing. Now what somebody has done with this one is they removed the, a lot of these had steel gas tanks in them and the steel gas tank has been removed and they actually replaced it with a plastic, regular portable five gallon plastic tank, which on these old birds, there isn't a lot of fuel. And I say that because these on my other boat, my other 76 Starcraft, or these 1.4 or these uh, 2.5 liter 120 horse four cylinders, about four and a half miles to gallon. <laughs> Holding it wide open throttle. I learned a lot about the mileage on my Mississippi run I made with my 76. Now, if you can see up here, I'll make sure you're in the video yeah, here. You can see it. The green machines up there on the front on the windshield, those will save the life of your of your uh, tar or your covers. I'm gonna see if I can shove this thing back a little bit. 
I want to get the whole thing. The whole idea about this cover is to work in the shade, you know? Now, one thing I would highly recommend is get yourself a tool kit of some sort that has all the sockets, ratchets, some Allen wrenches. The one I've got is missing screwdrivers, but it does have screwdriver bits in it, so you can do everything you need to do with this kit. I'm going to try to do all my repairs and all my working on this boat with just this kit because, believe it or not, I do throw this in the boat when I go out because I need to have the ability to repair anything that breaks. The other nice to have when you're working on your boat out in the yard is a spool or something like some kind of bench that you can reach over the, from the inside of the boat here to the outside and reach, reach your tools. That way you're not tripping over them. And then I also have a little, let's just call it a four foot step ladder to get in and out of the boat comfortably. Now before we wake this thing up after a long winter slumber and part of a spring slumber as well, is we want to put our drain plugs back in. There's one back here at the back of the manifold and there's one back here on the side of the block on these 2.5s. So we've got that taken care of. We put the plugs in. Now we're going to put a battery onto her. All right, what we got going on here is I've got the battery connected. There's not a whole lot of fuel in here. I'm pumping up the primer bulb on this just to make sure there's plenty of fuel at the fuel pump so when it kicks, it can go. Now the other thing I want to do pretty quick is I want to take the air filter off because I want to take a look at what's going on with the carburetor right out of the gate. Now I can see fuel dripping in there right now for me pumping it up. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the throttle forward just a little bit just to see if that automatic choke will snap shut. Just like it did there, the automatic choke is shut. I'll bring the throttle, throttle back down. And before I turn the key on, I'm going to go ahead and turn the water on. Make sure you got muffs on at all times. You never want to start it up dry. These muffs fit very well. They should provide me enough water so I don't burn up a water pump. And provide enough lube in there and coolant to keep her cool. Well, let's go ahead and switch it to the on position and hit the start. I'm going to give it a little throttle. Now I've got over 70 pounds of oil pressure. And I'm on the amps, I'm drawing positive amps. Now you can see some water dripping out here. What's going on? Dripping out of here. Oh, I gotta figure out why the water's leaking. Drop her down to an idle. She's idling real nice. We'll go ahead and shut her off. Yeah, the oil pressure drops all the way down. Let's just kick it one more time.
Now before everything gets too hot, I want to go ahead and address what's going on here, why this is leaking. Is it a gasket? Is it a bolt? What's going on? I don't recall it leaking last fall. Why did it feel very tight? None of these are crazy tight, but that's fine. I want to double check that gasket anyway. Let's go ahead and take the spring off of here. That's a good run of motor. It started right up. Hey, you know what? This clamp wasn't tight. Well, I'll be. Maybe I had that loose from when it. Let's just re snug things back up here. This could have all been me. A good chance of it. I took this hose loose when I flushed it and winterized it last year. So that's tight. Maybe that's all it was because these systems aren't under any pressure. These systems just have a, you know, the pump, the, whatever the pump pressure creates before the thermostat opens. That's it. It's not pressure like you have on your closed loop system, like you have on your vehicles where it can build up, you know, 15 pounds of pressure and everything's having to hold that pressure. Okay, let's tighten it. Let's just tighten up the hose clamp. You know, pipe clamp, it's there for a reason. Let's see if that fixes it. Everything else. Seems tight. All right. One more time. And then if that doesn't leak, we're going to let it come up to temperature. Hey, it's amazing what happens when you tighten things up. The old fuel pump sucking what? Or sucking fuel? That's good. Give her a little throttle. Let's just see how she shifts into gear now. Is that gear spinning? Do this when it goes into when it starts spinning on me. Not spin, not in gear there. I think the shift linkage needs to adjust it a little bit. There's a spot here. It's kind of cool on this shifter. You bring it forward, it just stops. You bring it forward, it should be like right there, it hits a detent. That should be in gear. And then from here. So the shift linkage needs adjusted. Yep, definitely got to shift the shift linkage. Okay, here's what I'm hearing happen. Right now on this shifter, there's a detent when I push it forward, right there, that should click into gear and it's not clicking into gear. If I go a little further forward, you can hear it clatter maybe, right there. 
Okay, folks, I'm gonna catch you up a little bit. Last thing I showed you was the shifter was out of whack. I was gonna go ahead and pull this off anyway because I wanna repair the exhaust uh, gimbal boot there. Uh, it's got a slight, uh, you know, a slight cut in it. You wanna repair that because you don't want water getting in there. That's where your drive shaft and stuff is spinning. You don't want water in your drive shaft mixing. It's not good. It causes it to rust and causes you some other problems. Well, this came off a little tough and it had it was tight you know you get a little corrosion sometimes these things should just slide right off sometimes you get a little touch of corrosion around there but it's just these six bolts release your trim cylinders and make sure your shifter is in forward all the way in forward gear and what that does is extend everything out it lines up this piece down here and i'm gonna get a closer shot of this but lines up so it's straight out because there's another piece that rides with it has to be straight out in order for things to slide straight out. I'll show you way more detail on that one, the reassembly, but I'll give you a little close up shot right now. Okay. All righty, what we got here, here's where your shift cable comes in at, right up here. And it's got a little slot in it that rides in this little wheelie beelie right here, right? When you come all the way back in the right position, You'll be able to see right down here, there's a little piece. I'll rotate it so you can see it a little bit right there. It's kind of hard to see, but it is a slot. And you only have about this much throw from there, from basically straight in, forward gear, to there is reverse, and somewhere in the middle is neutral. Not a lot of movement there. So things have to be right. And I'm going to show you why that's important a little bit later, because I found, discovered when we took the outdrive apart a little more, we discovered a lot more a bent, a bent item that would have added to the shifting problem. I'll show you another thing that would add to the shifting problem as well. So my buddy and I went ahead and pulled the shifter cable out of this and the throttle cable. They were both in bad condition. When I mean bad condition, you know, the cables still moved. They moved kind of stiff, but where it was exposed to the elements in the sunlight, the casing is just terribly rotten and all the wiring, you know, whatever the support of the cable housing is, is all rusty. So that didn't, that didn't help. So cables could have got out of adjustment because of the added pressure people put on them. So we ordered two new cables and I'll, I'll leave a link in the description where I ordered my shift cables. It's actually one of the better places I found to order them as far as lead time and dimension. And I'll show you also how to measure these cables so you can order the right ones for your replacement ones. And basically it's really simple on the measuring. You got this end of the cable and on the other end, you got this end. They're very, they're very universal. If you find ones that look like yours, they'll probably be like yours. Uh, what this does, uh, you measure it from end to end. So lay this out on the floor, have somebody help you measure it from end to end, and that'll be the length of the cable. In this case, we ordered a 15-footer and an 18-footer. And that'll, that'll run the, from the controls all the way to the back of the boat and do everything we need it to do. Obviously, the, the throttle cable one is a shorter one. The shift linkage one goes down, around, and under the motor and loops into the same control, and that's the longer one. But we'll go into more detail on the cables when we get them here and show you how we took the controller apart and how it needs to go back together. So anyway, I took a lot of things apart. Same way with the, the stern drive part of it. I took that out, took it apart, got the water pump out, got all that discovered what I needed. Because a lot of that stuff, you can look up an outdrive water pump and you might see for an, for an Alpha 1, you might see three or four different kinds. So you want to look at the gasket, the shape of the housing, and make sure you're ordering the right one. So that's why I like to take it apart, then place orders. Now that we've got all of our parts ordered for the outdrive and for the shift linkages, we're going to go ahead and start paying more attention to other pieces of the boat, like the trailer lighting, the wheels and tires, the wheel bearings, and the coupler, possibly the strap that winches the boat up. Uh, we want to get all that stuff sorted out ahead of time. Well, we're, we got about a week and a half we're waiting on parts, so this is a good time to button up all those other little loose ends that you have. Make sure your bilge pump works. 
uh, secure some gas tanks down, secure a battery box it may not have, may or may not have. This one doesn't have a battery box in it. So we'll get a battery box in it. We'll get all that stuff sorted out. So when the rest of the parts show up, we can bring this thing back together and get us out on the water sooner. But uh, it's excited to get this thing up and going. As you saw, the thing runs like a champ. You know, after sitting all winter, it ran really, really well. Other than the one leak that was my own fault because I didn't tighten up the pipe clamp. Anyway, we'll get into wheel bearings here because I've yet to buy a boat and trailer that the wheel bearings weren't shot in it. Even though these have bearing buddies in it, in order for them to work, you got to give them some lubrication every now and then. You can't just put bearing buddies on and go, I don't need to worry about it anymore. So we're going to get into jacking this thing up, get a wheel pulled off. We're going to examine the bearings because nine times out of 10, it's been my experience, have to buy new races and new bearings to put it back together because these will have rust pits on them or have some moisture uh, because they're dipped in the water. Now a trailer that you never dip in the water, bearings and the grease in them will last quite a while. But once you dip in the water, I repack my wheel bearings every year, every single year. Well, especially when you dunk your boat in it, in the water up to 50 times a year, it's a good chance it took on water because when you go down the highway on a hot day and then you back it into some 50 degree water, it can suck in moisture, create condensation and all that kind of fun stuff. So that's why you need to check it pretty often. Let's get down here and get this wheel jacked up, get the hub off and see what we got. So service this part of your wheels is pretty simple. Now, like this tire here has a lot of tread and I'm gonna drop some knowledge on you if you don't already know it. And I'd be curious if this tire has it. Might be on the other side. I'm looking for a date code. Because the tire can look really good on the outside, but be completely rotten, so to speak, on the inside. I don't quite see the date code here, so let's ugga dugga these off. on the back side of this tire. Yeah, here it is. Woo I'm gonna show you guys up close what I'll be talking about. It's got a date code right here in a little oval. And it says 3910. What that tells me is that's a 19 or 39th week of 2010 this tire is 12 years old and the tread on it still looks pretty good you know it really doesn't have any dry it doesn't have any dry rotting or cracking or anything but you don't want to use that tire it's a very unsafe tire so we got some new ones coming because this thing part of going fishing is is getting there man i dropped a lug nut where do you think it rolled to? Anybody have any guesses? There it is, found it. You can stop looking now. God, this grass is like, I need to spray it. Okay, once you got the wheel off, this gets real simple real fast. I use a soft face hammer. This one here has got a bearing buddy on it. You can also use a little, uh, on one of the regular caps. Now I want you to hear that. Guarantee she's dry as that as can be. But you can just take these bearing buddies to kind of tap them, work them off. Now there's a lot of grease right there, but that there's no grease where it belongs. Now what kind of what kind of what do we got here? No idea. Oops, see, I see the end of a cotter pin. Oh, there it is. All buried in the grease. I 
There's half of it. Where's the other half? You guys might be laughing because I'm wearing gloves here, but uh, this grease just gets everywhere. And when I'm done here, I can just peel the old gloves off and I'll set the old cotter pin right there. There we go. That's coming right off. Now we know the bearings are dry and they're shot. They're just, just, that's just a given. So anything making that kind of noise, she's pretty dry. Now the other thing you want to feel for on the bottom of this axle, you want to see if there's a ridge right here where the bearing rides. And if there's a ridge, that means that bearing's been spinning with the weight against it. And uh, that's not good. Now you can see all this grease built up around here. We'll clean all this up, make her all spiffy. But if I got to order bearings so I can measure the axle now, this diameter and this diameter, and that'll tell me what kind of bearing set I need. My guess is this is like an inch and three eighths and this is a one inch down here. Or geez, this looks like a three quarter. We'll get the old caliper out and measure it. But yeah, it just it didn't sound good. Even though there's a lot of grease in there, it wasn't water and it wasn't rusty, but it also shouldn't, shouldn't sound like you shouldn't be able to hear it. Let's put it that way. All right. We'll just stick the old nut back on here and we'll go after the other side. See now, you guys might have been laughing, but I can't even pinch my glove to take it off. I'm gonna get a little grease on me. But now I can do that and that. And my hands is clean, almost clean. Cool. Let's check out, we're gonna put this up on a jack stand. And we'll check the other side. It's actually a pretty heavy duty axle. Taking any bets on the condition of this one? <laughs> oh, sounds like 10 miles of bad road. What kind of date coating we got here? My guess is it's the same. Well, if this is right, this says 28th week of 09. Wow. So somebody must have replaced one of them with a newer one, you know. Like, golly, can't move. <laughs> yeah, so that one was even older. 13 years old. Still, no weather checking. Nice toe max tire. I mean, it's a, for not to weather check for being that old. That's pretty, that's pretty impressive. There are lots of grease in there. Just not a lot where you need it. Well, you know, those bearings don't look that bad, but you know, you know, they ran dry for a while. So for the price of a bearing, it's worth replacing. Any guesses as to the size? Like I said, that's guess an inch and three eighths or maybe inch and a quarter by, there it is, inch and a quarter by three quarter. Yep. With a seal diameter of inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a quarter, three quarter. Let's go see if we can find some parts. All right, we're going to replace the gimbal boots on this 1967 StarCraft Deluxe Modernized Beauty. Got to put this, goes in here somewhere. Yeah, it does. This, a uh -huh. little bit of that. Eh. Some of this. But we gotta get this off. We don't, I've seen people do this without taking it off, but it's just a good time to take it off and take a look at things. And because I don't, what I'm, don't know what I'm doing, that's why I'm doing it. Right now there's a pin that's gotta come out. We've got it out on the other side. There's a pin that's gotta come out here. There's a little nail, and it looks like a little nail stuck right in here. Looks like it's made out of aluminum. As you can see right there. I'm going to get the giant slide hammer out so we can really work this nail over. Yep, right tool for the right job. Give it up. All right. Well, now I'll just tighten it in until it spins. <laughs> now they pull the nail out. i got nothing to hold it still, but... Put that in there. We'll get the old slide hammer 2000 on it and just give it a little... 
like that. Then this should be free to, where'd that part come from? Where's that part go back in? It's a mystery. It's a mystery. All right, Just in between here. We're down to the gimbal bearing. And I don't know if it's a gimbal bearing. It's a bearing for the drive shaft to ride in. And uh, we're getting that out. That snap ring, I'll show you a pair of pliers here. You're gonna need some snap ring pliers. And these are no joke. Got them from Hobo Freight. Now we're using a giant slide hammer to get this thing moving. And we have to deliver some pretty good wax to get this out of here. I win every time! All right, look at that. That's, take a picture of that because we're done. We're on the back together, going back together to venture today. Got her? All right. Now these, this snap ring is no joke. It's a nice big heavy duty one. Uh, made of some quality steel because it we torqued on to get it out of here and it didn't lose any of its shape or anything, but these pliers are making it. Oh, that was so good. I'll spin that bearing for you later. That bearing was shot. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a wire wheel and go and clean out the outside of all these surfaces here that need to have a, a boot seal up on it. And we're gonna start putting the boots back on here in the hoses and then we'll get the gimbal part back on. So we're kind of showing you going back together more than taking apart because let's be honest, I didn't know what I was doing. Well, we've got that. We've had the out drive off of this for a minute. We actually split this apart, put a new water pump in it. I'm not going to go over that with you. Uh, I might do another video later on the big blue boat doing the water pump. But uh, we split this, put a new water pump in it, put it back together, and we did replace all the CV joints here, all the U joints that creates this CV joint. Replace those brand new with greasable ones. One that was in here was not a serviceable or greasable one. So, but this one was, but I'm glad we took it apart because we found some things we didn't like that we saw. So we've got this all put together. Uh, just to give you an idea, that's not one of them, but they were, they were pretty grody. Now I want you guys to hear this. On the bearing, can you guys hear that? I got it next to my mic. That's the bearing that sits right here when you assemble this. So we. We got a new bearing, we have, we have now installed that. We're now ready to go back together with some of the gimbal boots and all that stuff. We're gonna show you more detail on the gimbal boots. I'll show you more on that disassembly here in just a minute. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can catch you up a little bit of what it took to get this gimbal housing off of here. This particular boat, or old, this is 1967. For the pins that are in here for the pivot, has two things that look like little aluminum nails that go in there and they that's what they exactly look like little nails they go in through here this little tiny hole here go through the pin and you bend the other end up into a groove that's actually there uh, and that locks the pins from falling out they're not screwed in or threaded in like the newer versions are the other key to getting this apart the shift linkage here I'll bring you up close. All right, in order to get that all the way off, like I've got it there, you've got to disconnect the rear shift cable linkage piece. I don't know what you call this, shifter fork, or whatever you want to call it. It has a little wheel that runs inside here, and this goes back and forth. And in order to get it apart, there's a threaded piece that looks just like this, because it is this. That's why it looks just like it. That's in here, like that. 
And what it has in here is this cable. And I'll go ahead and slide this back. And it's a short cable. It's probably four feet long. This is the cable that just goes up and connects to your whole shift mechanism. Come on. So that cable is actually inside here like this. Goes up and hits a stop. And then this set screw goes in and traps it so it can't move back and forth. The other end of your cable, this all goes through your housing that's on the other part of the gimbal I'm getting ready to show you. Goes through and on the other end of the shift cable, there's two little square set screws that come in. They got a square head on them. They come in from each side and they pinch onto this and lock that whole end onto the cable. That's so you can disassemble this cable as such and get this thing out. Um, that's very key to know to get this thing apart. This is the other end of the cable that is on this piece right here. As you can see, it's got the, we got a new boot on it here. We're getting ready to put this back together here shortly, as soon as I get all the right parts. But that's what's on the other end. And that goes through your transom. There's a hole down here. This lower right, there's a hole right there with a place for the boot clamps on. That this goes back through, up and in, and into your shift mechanism, mechani mechanizer, <coughs> leverage thing, up inside the boat. So we're currently, and one of the things I've learned, <laughs> buddy of mine just learned, buddy and I, him and I, the wheeze, is that this diameter here and this diameter here on this boat is the same diameter. And why I say that's important is because when I ordered stuff, I thought, oh, just get an Alpha One kit. It'll be fine because it all looks the same. Well, this mounting area that's on here, all that stuff looks the same. The gimbal bearing and everything, pretty much the same. But we'll note a very key difference. On the Alpha Ones, I believe an Alpha Two, that diameter is two different sizes. Now going by what I purchased here, I'm hoping I got it right because this, it is or it isn't. If it's not the right one, I'll send it back. But they're showing, they're showing from 1973 to 1990, the, the Fitz Mercruiser Alpha One Gen One, so there's Gen One, R, M, R, and number one, Stern Drives. Transom Bellows Repair Reseal Kit. So I'm not sure if this is the right one or not because it might be, it should be the same diameter on both ends I'm hoping. We'll find out when it shows up. But other than getting to the pipe clamps, it can come apart relatively easy. The pipe clamps can be the biggest pain in the butt. Now this particular one has a 5 8 diameter hose. The kit I bought has a three quarter inch diameter hose that goes up in here and this is basically for your pickup that goes down to your water pump. And uh, the one I bought wasn't right. Made in USA Goodyear, Horizon TM 58s. Anyway, the new kit that I ordered has both diameter hoses with it. So I'm hoping it has the same kind of situation. It has the bigger bellows. And looking at the pictures, looks right. If not, I also ordered bellows. It's just the bellows that I know are the same size on both ends. And the reason I ordered the second kit is because I'm going to be working on the old big old blue back here. And when I say big old blue, I mean my 22 and a half foot 1968, I believe it's Starcraft, uh, Islander. We'll get into more of that later. I bought it last year. Out drive issues for sure. We're gonna do the same job I'm doing on this green boat behind us now. Uh, but I will go in some very, I will get painfully detailed on that one for you. And what I mean by painfully detailed is this one here, we replaced the shift, we're replacing the shift cables and linkages. We're taking apart the control. We're cleaning it up, re-lubing it, and gonna be putting it back together. 
But what I mean by painfully detailed is I was, I'm giving you kind of highlights here because some of this stuff I haven't had a part before. I know it's hard to believe, but I learned by doing. And I want to share what I learned by doing with you folks out there. So I'm giving you some highlights on this one. Some of the key things that you need to take it apart. Taking shifter cables out, measuring shifter cables, I think I showed you early in the video. Pretty simple, straightforward process. Uh, our shifter cables are in. Uh, my buddy had already laid those back in here. We're about ready to hook the control back up. Uh, I'll see if I can get you some more detail on when we reassemble that controller and uh, what I'm looking for and what I'm watching for when I assemble that. But then we'll get the cables in and then once I get this piece on, I want to get the shift linkage adjusted because there's a key component here on the bottom of this piece that needs to be straight when it's in forward, turned a little bit when it's in neutral, and turned a little more this way when it's in reverse. And I'll show you some of that detail and how I'm going to adjust it. I'll try to get you into the back of the boat as much as possible. Whatever I miss on this video, you'll definitely catch on the next video. Uh, I'll have to find out if I'm actually replacing the shift linkages on that boat or not. Uh, these were definitely toast. They had the, the coating was coming off the outside. The, the cabling underneath was rusty. They still moved, but I ain't kidding you. The new ones I got, whoo, you can have it coiled up four times around and still move it. And it actually moved pretty free. So when they're laid out pretty much straight, those things are just going to float in there. So perfect. All right. Um, we'll uh, get back out here after I get some more, the bright parts in, we'll get this, uh, get this uh, piece back on, get the out drive back on the back of the boat, get another prop put on it because the prop that was on it was pretty beat up and hopefully be firing this thing up and be so much closer to being in the water. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna release this video, this particular video, till this boat is in the water. So I can get you some awesome drone footage of it and we can see how it performs or fails. Our goal is not to fail. Our goal is to make this thing so it works. So, and all the parts and all my tools are laying out here underneath this canopy and I can't wait to get all my tools gathered up back into one location again. All right, folks, wait for parts. All right, folks, we installed the out drive here. We got it all back together, all the bellows, boots and stuff put back on. Had to top off the trim pump. Trim works perfect. The engine starts and runs great. Everything functions as it, sh as it should. We got the new cables installed. That was quite a little treat to figure that out, but we got her figured out. I uh, watched one video that somebody else did it. Very informative video. And uh, yeah, we took it to the lake. My goal was to get you some footage on the lake today. And we took it to a small lake just to give her a test run. It's a no-wake lake, so we could fire it up and just cruise around at five miles an hour. And after we got a quarter mile, maybe a little more, from the dock, I decided to go back and peel the engine cover ahead a little bit and just take a gander at how things were looking back there. And there was that much water in the boat. <laughs> I told my buddy that was driving the boat, I said, we're sinking. I don't know where it's coming in at, but we're sinking. So we pulled the bilge. We hadn't tested the bilge. We tested all kinds of stuff. We didn't test the bilge to make sure it worked because we weren't, <coughs> we weren't gonna be out in the water that long. And, if it, and it was just your normal rivets leaking. It wasn't gonna be a big deal. Well, it turned out to be a big deal. It was leaking, I ain't kidding you, as if you didn't put the plug in. And but we got back, with we, the bilge did come on, so we were pumping it out as fast as it was coming in, so it quit getting any deeper, thank goodness. But I'm gonna show you what I found, and I wanted to figure this one out, because the boat, everything else on the boat just is awesome. Works spectacularly, fantastically, something like that. It's working great, but I'm gonna get you down here and show you this little number. Now I'm going to show you where I think the leak is coming from. <laughs> we discovered this yesterday. And as you can see the seam along here where the out drive meets the boat. Looks like it fits pretty tight. Looks like somebody's attempted to put some 
silicone sealing around here at one time in the past and then dun 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 look down here wide open and I just have a feeling that something about the back of the boat's not perfectly flat. Somebody tried to put some silicone in there. It's been here a long time. It's cracked and separated. It's tired and old. So I have a feeling the only way we're gonna be able to fix this is to clean out all the sealant that's around there and try to reseal it. Uh, and wish for the best for that. If that doesn't work, then this whole piece has gotta come back off clean it up, new gasket, new sealant. I mean, this is obviously way beyond gasket thickness. I can see the gasket in there. Um, not sure what would cause that, unless something on the, the bottom end of the outdrive took a hit and caused this to flex the boat out a little bit. We're gonna get, I'm gonna get inside and look inside of it and check some things out. There's two big bolt heads here that go through the boat there. That would let a lot of water in, a whole lot of water in really fast. So we're going to see what we can discover there and maybe we'll have a spotlight checkup once I get it fixed to let you know how, how we fixed it and how we slowed the leak down or stopped the leak completely in another video. The good news is a lot of things we did went very right. We got all the bellows boots put on, no leaking there that we can tell. Um, engine, like I said, runs fantastic. But uh, that one's got us a little bit puzzled. Water pump pumps like it should. Engine doesn't, runs right in the middle of normal temperature like it should. So we gotta get that little problem fixed and I think we got ourselves a real winner here. But uh, if you guys have seen something like that before, don't be afraid to leave comments down below and tell me what you might have done to fix that little bit of a problem. Um, there, we can get to the bolts on the inside at the bottom. I'm not sure if that can be sucked back in or if it takes some plates something stiff, stiffer on the inside to kind of pull that back up tight. But I'm not so sure that we can't keep that from leaking without pulling that off and resealing it again. That's my fear, but I'll do what I need to do. We did come home and check out the old big blue boat. That's a 68. This is a 67 and a 68 and go, wow. First time I'd seen this before, I went and looked at that boat because Right now it's got the out drive off of it and it needs a gimbal boot. I went and looked in that boat, no gimbal boot at all. No, no, where this universal joint is, there's no boot in there, period. No wonder the thing locked up for somebody. Good thing I got another out drive that I'm sticking on that joker. But uh, I might dig into this a little bit more because all the sealants and all the fun stuff around that that keeps the water out could be archaic and ancient. So that means I probably should go ahead and do my due diligence and pull that off, reseal, remarry it up, and then I'm good for another, I don't know, 50 years. So this is Michael saying, don't forget to like and subscribe. Look at the links down below for tools and items that I use in this video uh, are there. Links to take you to the products. Uh, don't cost you anything to follow those links. Appreciate it when you do. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is, and we'll see you on the next video. Or hopefully I'm not on a sinking boat.